What's up, guys? I hope that's not too loud. Alrighty, we're going to be doing a, another History Matters reaction today. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, click the bell uh, icon, little bell button to see when my next video comes out. Shortly out of breath because I was running up and down the stairs and I'm out of shape. And check out his channel. I will leave his uh, original video down in the description below. Let's in 1949, Mao Zedong proclaimed the creation of the People's Republic of China. Whilst he was doing this, the Chinese Civil War was still raging on with the Kuomintang opposition fleeing to the island of Taiwan. And by 1951, all of mainland China and the island of Hainan was under the control of the Chinese Hainan. Communist Party. Which raises the obvious question, why didn't Mao conquer Taiwan? Well, the first reason was that Mao still needed to consolidate the Communist Party's hold on mainland China. Now, the Communist Armed Forces, the People's Liberation Army, was about three times the size of the Kuomintang military, but numbers aren't everything. The PLA had a I minuscule... Want to see when the U.S. got involved. I mean, he had like 30 years to conquer it. Air Force, whereas the Kuomintang had a modern one made up of mostly American fighters and bombers. Also, the PLA didn't have a navy, whereas the overwhelming majority of China's old ships had been taken to Taiwan. Mao stationed troops along the coastline and prepared for an invasion ah. of the remaining Kuomintang positions, the closest of which were the Kuemoi Islands. When the go-ahead was given, the invasion was, to put it mildly, a disaster. This setback wasn't enough to deter Mao, though, from gaining Kuomintang positions, the closest of which were the Kuemoi Islands. When the go-ahead was given, the invasion was, to put it mildly, a disaster. This setback wasn't enough to deter Mao, though, and he ordered plans for the final conquest of Taiwan to be drafted. The plan was to buy as many transportation vessels as possible and simply overwhelm the island with sheer numbers. This plan was scrapped because oh frankly God, it was a stupid one and also Mao was concerned that the USA would intervene if he invaded, which he was right about because the United States placed its fleet between China and sheer numbers. The plan was to buy as many transportation vessels as possible and simply overwhelm the island with sheer numbers. This plan was scrapped because frankly it was a stupid one and also Mao was concerned that the USA would intervene if he invaded, which he was right about what because the United that? States placed its fleet between China and Taiwan and made it clear to Mao that any invasion would also mean war with them. However, by this point, Mao had another issue to deal with since the Korean War had just begun next door. This saw direct fighting between Chinese and American forces and, importantly, saw US President Harry Truman commit to defend non-communist regimes in the area, including Chiang Kai-shek's Kuomintang government in Taiwan. In 1953, a ceasefire ended the fighting on the Korean Peninsula, and so Mao could turn his attention back to Taiwan. Okay, and so I was wrong about the, like, 40 years of them having to conquer it. I just read the Wikipedia article quick to see when um, I knew an obvious deterrent might be if the U.S. would protect Taiwan if China tried to take it back, but I thought it said 1979 it started referring to Taiwan as Taiwan instead of part of China. But apparently ever since the early 50s or like right after the World War, um, the U.S. is pretty quick to uh, show force to China and say that you know, if you're attacking Taiwan, you're going to attack us and then definitely lose. Boy, did he, because the next year he ordered the shelling of the Kuemoi Islands, to which the Taiwanese government responded tit for tat. Things began to escalate and President Truman did three things. First of all, he sent reinforcements to Taiwan. Second, he and Congress passed legislation committing the US to defend Taiwan in the event of invasion. And third, he threatened to nuke China. This worked and Mao, somewhat opposed to being nuked, ordered his forces to desist. And this threat convinced Mao of one thing, that China needed its own nuclear weapons if it was ever going to stand up to the United States or ever hope to assert its... That's the story of 1950 to now with, like, South, with uh, North Korea. It's like, for once there is this ultimate weapon where you can threaten another country with and that country can't be like okay well you can try and conquer us but we're gonna inflict we're gonna fight so hard and inflict so many casualties casualties on your side it'll be a what a, a, a pyrrhic victory is that what it's called when you win the battle but so many of your men were lost that it wasn't really worth it but when you have this giant bomb where no one has to get in in the way of your troops don't have to get in the way 
and you can just blow up cities just like that and uh finally it became you know you can't you can't sort of you know puff your chest out against a much bigger person and say hey we'll make it tough for you when they have this weapon they can just drop on you and explode a city and so ever since the 1950s any country who wants to at least be able to stand up against the u.s or russia or whatnot they need a nuclear weapon it, it's the ultimate ticket of being able to be on the negotiating table in world affairs always having that nuclear stockpile behind you saying okay yeah you could blow us up but do you really want us to launch a nuke at you itself over taiwan however before these nuclear weapons were finished mao ordered the shelling of the islands again because at this point why not it was something to do i guess this time the air forces got involved and hundreds of people died and president eisenhower threatened to invade the mainland if things didn't calm down which they promptly did now this was the last time that china attempted to forcibly capture territory from chiang kai-shek when Mao died in 1976, his successor preferred a policy of peaceful reunification. In the end, Mao didn't conquer Taiwan for one very simple reason. He couldn't. The US Navy sat between China and Taiwan, and it was by far the most powerful in the world. And where Mao tried to use force and nuclear retaliation by the United States was an ever-present threat. Not to mention that any attempt by Mao to take the island would have been costly in lives and money, which, given the fact he was trying to build a revolutionary government, was something that he needed more than Taiwan. I hope you enjoyed this episode. An amazing and video. I might like this channel even more than oversimplified, um, which is saying a lot. I, I'm borderline. It's just such a good channel at teaching you relatively big subjects comparatively to their three and a half minutes he usually puts his videos. And I think it's so important to, uh, like, videos like that uh, History of the World or history of everything or something like that um, and uh, just to get people interested in broad topics so that they can then deep, uh, dig deeper in I think that you know we try too hard in education to teach every kid step by step the main things we think about uh, in history class like well it depends on what country you're in but for the US a uh, bit of world history that's related to the US and then obviously American history. But I think if we sort of show people who don't need a long attention span just these little snippets of history where they can then say, ooh, that's cool, they will want to learn more about that. And so I think that that'd be a big help in education. I'm going so off but amazing amazing video amazing channel i'm gonna react to a bunch of these more i love them one of my favorite channels and i'll uh, see you next time guys thank you for watching with thanks to my patreon